How's it going everyone? Adam here from Coding Basics and welcome to the sixth tutorial in my Programming Leap Motion with Python series. Last video we uh, only programmed two lines but I was quickly going over getting data for each arm attached to each hand. This video we're going to be going over getting data for each individual finger. So for that first going to um, well, I guess we're just going to continue this for loop because we're going to get the data for each finger for each hand. And we are going to start another for loop. So for finger in hand dot fingers. So each hand has a list of fingers associated with them. And this is the data we're going to get for each one of those fingers inside this for loop. So first, we're going to focus on the data each finger brings, and then we're going to sort of focus on the bones of each finger. Now, just to uh, avoid multiple lines being printed out in PowerShell, I'm going to triple quote uh, to comment out all the lines above our for loop here, just so PowerShell doesn't get overwhelmed with a bunch of text. All right. Oops. All right. Uh, okay. So now we're ready to get started. Once again, I'm just going to print the data out. You can save them as variables, but I'm just printing them just so you can get a visual representation of it. So, first, we are going to print out the finger type. So, if you'll remember up here, we created somewhere where is it right here we created these uh, uh, lists and we're finally going to start using them this one for the finger type it'll basically return which finger it is if it's your thumb index middle ring or pinky finger so that's what we're going to print out first so first we're going to print out type and for that we are going to just looking at my notes, okay. So we're gonna call self, which is what you use to get data for this class. So self dot finger underscore names, and then the index we're getting it at is finger dot type. Which is going to that's why I said this order is important. Make sure your finger names are in this order because the finger type is just a number which is used to get the string at that index. Remember that. Alright, so that's going to return the type of finger. Next we are going to print out the finger ID. So just like hand and frame, everything has an its own ID same for fingers, every time you put a finger over the motion sensor, as long as it's over, it'll have the same ID. Well, it should anyway. And it changes when you take your finger off the motion sensor and then bring it back. It'll have a different ID this time. So, you're going to print out ID. And then finger dot ID. And we have to convert it to a string. All right, so that's our finger ID. Next, we're going to go over the length of the finger, which is going to return a uh, length in millimeters. So length, and then in brackets, I'll just put millimeters so we remember the units we're in. And for that, we're going to reference finger.length. And once again, we have to convert this to a string. All right. And we're on to the final piece of data, which is the width, also in millimeters. So, width. And that's in millimeters. And we're going to print that out. The string representation of finger dot width. So, video is not done. We're going to test what we have so far, and then we'll get into bones. Let's just to see what we have for each finger. 
make sure you're in the folder where you have it saved, IRDM, and let's run it. So my hand was kind of over when I was reaching over for my keyboard. I'm going to put my hand over now. Okay. So just to show you what we're working with here, my, s my other hand kind of crossed over when I hit the enter key to exit out. So let's go up a bit. But, um, so Pinky here. Pinky had an ID of 804. The last time the Pinky was detected was also 804. So I didn't move it. Same thing. It has the same length as it did before. And it will also have the same width as it did before. Actually, wait a minute. Pinky. Yep, same width. Sorry, I was reading the wrong one. But everything works exactly how we wanted it to. And you'll see it recognized them in the proper order. So you wanted your index first, middle, ring, then pinky. Oh, thumb as well. I forgot thumb. So that's all we're going to do for finger data. Next, we're going to go into bone data because that kind of ties in. So inside this for loop, we're going to create another for loop. So for um, b, we'll just create a random variable b in range 0, 4. So what this is in return, first time b is going to be 0, second time it's going to be 1, second, or third time it's going to be 2, final time it will be 3. And b is just what we're going to use to get the bone we want. Uh, there's are only four bones in your finger, which we gave names for up here. Your metacarpal, your proximal, your intermediate, and your distal bone. So for each B, we're going to create a new bone, and we're going to set that equal to finger dot bone, and then we're going to pass in B to get uh, the bone at that index. Now what we're going to do with this bone, we are going to print out all the data once again. First one, uh, we're just going to print out the bone uh, name. So for that, it is self. So once again, we're going to reference uh, the uh, list up here in our class. So that's why we have to use self. So self.bone underscore names and we are going to pass in bone dot type oops didn't mean to hit enter and that'll return a string of the type of bone sorry that was just a video I was working on I guess it finished compiling uh, next one is going to be the start so what this does is it returns, returns a vector of where the uh, next bone uh what was the the bone started and then next joint is a vector where the uh bone ends so we are going to just print out start so the start of the bone and we'll get that from the bone dot prev underscore joint vector and then same thing just for the uh, end of the joint and we'll get that by uh, using bone dot next underscore joint final piece of data we're going to go over in this video is the direction vector so what direction the bone is pointing in and for that, we'll print out direction, and then the uh, bone dot direction. One thing I just noticed as well, I have for completely forgotten about converting these to a string. So do that for each vector. Even for vectors, you have to do it. It's not just numbers. Okay, one more, and we are done. All right, save it, and let's launch this in PowerShell. So let's try this now.
Okay, that's it. So let's look at the data we got. So first one for the pinky. This is the finger that it's focusing on. So it gives all this all the data for the pinky, but then it gives us the data for all the bones in that uh, pinky. So the first one is the metacarpal. Where in our coordinate system it starts, where it ends, in the direction the bone is pointing. And then the proximal, intermediate, and distal. So that is all I want to talk about in this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please give the video a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. If there's any tutorial series you want me to do, let me know. And other than that, I will see you in the next video where we go over getting data from each tool in the frame.